someone keeps parking on your driveway, infuriating, I know. So what can you do about it? And just as importantly, what can't you do about it? In this video, I'll explain the legal parking rules that might surprise you, what you can and can't do if someone parks on your land and how to deal with someone parking in your assigned space. I'm Daniel Barnett, a barrister in central London, and I'm the presenter of The Legal Hour on LBC Radio. This is one of a series of videos I've made on neighbour disputes. To receive notifications about all my legal explainer videos, please do subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell. Thank you. When it comes to private land, parking is not a criminal or a police matter, but it could amount to a trespass, which is a civil wrong. If someone's parked on your land without permission, you might be able to make a claim in the civil courts, but the starting point is to check if your neighbour has the right to park on your land. They might benefit from something called a parking easement. This is a right attached to the land that they own, allowing them to park on a portion of your land. Though it was once doubted a parking easement could exist, a House of Lords case called Moncrief and Jameson confirms that it can. But it can only do so if the owner of the land being parked on retains possession and control of their land. So how do you work out if a parking easement exists? Well, the first step is to check the land registry records and see if there is one against your land. The land registry records the majority of easements. This should appear on the documents provided by your solicitor when you bought the land. You can also pay a small fee to search the land registry. If an easement isn't registered, it may still exist by a process known as prescription. Now this can happen if your neighbour has parked on the land for 20 years or more without using force, without any secrecy and without asking your permission. There's got to be continuity. Long unexplained periods without any parking will put a stop to an easement arising. If your neighbour parks on your land without the right to do so, you can sue them for trespass in the county court. Now, the court can issue an injunction to stop future parking. It can also order your neighbour to pay you damages. If their conduct's caused you distress, this can occasionally, only occasionally, include a high amount of damages known as aggravated damages. Other than court action, the steps you can take to deal with unauthorised parking are very, very limited. You have a legal right to remove a trespasser from your land if they refuse to leave, but you can't use more than reasonable force. Also bear in mind that physically removing someone could aggravate the situation. If practical, installing a bollard or a gate can help prevent future problems. Any damage to a vehicle parked on your land could result in a civil claim against you. It could even result in you being prosecuted for criminal damage under Section 1 of the Criminal Damage Act 1971. Neither local authorities nor the police have the right or power to remove a vehicle parked on your land in most circumstances. A key exception is where a vehicle has been abandoned. Local authorities have the power to issue a fixed penalty notice to the driver and ultimately remove the vehicle of an abandoned car. It isn't, it isn't legal for a private landowner, you, to clamp or otherwise immobilise a car parked on your land. Section 54 of the Protection of Freedoms Act 2012 creates a criminal offence of immobilising a vehicle without lawful authority with the intent to prevent or inhibit the removal of the vehicle by a person otherwise entitled to remove it. Another common bugbear is a neighbour who parks in a designated bay that's assigned to you but it's not owned by you. Your options depend on how you were assigned the space. You'll need to look at the lease that gives you the right to park in that space. In general, your landlord, not you, but your landlord will have the power to enforce the terms of your lease and take action against another resident who breaks or breaches its terms. Sometimes the lease requires the landlord to take these steps if you ask for it. If this happens, you're usually on the hook for the legal costs of doing so. Other leases contain covenants that are mutually enforceable, meaning meaning you could take the action directly in the courts. Check the wording of the lease, which should make clear who can enforce its terms. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, you might be interested in this one and this one. I'm Barrister Daniel Barnett. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.